in the series of basics of software defined radios and practical applications, uh, we have been discussing distortion parameters and it is continuation of that module. So, we have been discussing the effect of uh, phase jitter at the output. So, we were discussing one example where we have the clock frequency of 100 megahertz and uh, we wanted to know what would, what should be the jitter in seconds for having the dynamic range of uh, which is equivalent to the contention wise from the 12 bit system. So, the formulation says that uh, SNR of uh, due to jitter in dB is given by the formulation of minus 20 log 2 pi f n and jitter in time. So, we will be using this formula again, but first of all we will be calculating, uh, first of all we will be calculating the SNR due to the quantization noise. So, SNR due to quantization. So, we know it is 6.02 times n into 1.76 and we are uh, we know that n is given as 12 bits. So, 6.02 into 12 plus 1.76. So, it becomes almost 74 dBc. Now, uh, we have to know that how much jitter, how much phase shift in time uh, in terms of RMS because it is a fluctuating uh, parameter uh, will be required to receive this SNR. So, we will equate this SNR uh, minus 20 log 10 2 pi f i f i in and del t r m s right. So, by the uh, calculation it will become 2 pi f i del t r m s minus 74 divided by 20 uh, and it will be 10 to the power. So, 10 will go there and we can calculate our r m s as 2 into pi into 100 into 10 to the power 6 hertz and 10 to the power minus 74 divided by 20. So, by keeping this value we will be able to calculate del t jitter and it is coming out to be 0 0.317 pico second. So, if you want to achieve this performance uh, only with the jitter, then we have to have very small jitter in terms of picosecond, which is very very hard to achieve. So, uh, basically from this equation you can also see that if we keep increasing our f value, this value, then this del t requirement will become more and more stringent. Uh, we have to get smaller and smaller shift, which is not possible. So, uh, where we ha we have to maintain our t and we have to work on those frequency level where uh, it can be manageable. Now, uh, we have talked in terms of the time domain till now because this del t is shift in the time uh, domain uh, platform, but if we plot the same thing in the frequency domain then in, in this diagram it is showing our frequency signal at the RF frequency. Now, we have two kind of systems homodyne and heterodyne. In the homodyne system our uh, FRF is coming directly from the LO synthes synthesizing with LO and if that LO has this uh, phase jitter and this noise is here then it will have that phase noise will have this kind of shape and near the DC offset near the 0 frequency it will be more concentrated and as it goes beyond the DC frequency 0 frequency then it becomes lower and lower it becomes smaller. Now, in case of heterodyne structure we have two stages and in uh, both the stages if we have this jitter effect then it will also look like this one. So, in this diagram basically this uh, this uh, reducing kind of curve is phase noise and this constant uh, line is actually the quantization noise we can say it is equally distributed it does not have uh, any PDF of similar to the phase noise. Now, phase noise appear in the 
frequency domain it is easier to see there and jitter is mostly observable in the time domain. Now, phase noise is not only because of the uh, jitter in the uh, time domain apart from that uh, in itself it can have uh, some phase uh, in the synthesizer which is the oscillator. So, this is a relationship between this phase noise and jitter. Now, uh, we have to remember that uh, that jitter me me uh, measurement equipments are less sensitive because jitter are very small and we are not able to capture the exact moment uh, always precisely. So, it is possible that we are not able to uh, measure them precisely, but the phase noise measurement uh, systems are more precise. So, by this theoretical relation between these two, what we can do that we can use the uh, measurement of the phase noise and then once we have the phase noise measurement in the frequency domain, then we can use this formulation to get our RMS jitter in seconds. So, this uh, RMS jitter uh, depends on the time period of the clock where which is uh, it is uh, proportional to the square of this time period of the clock. Then uh, this variable tau which is actually being measured after n time intervals this tau is actually time lapsed during the n time intervals and this RMS jitter is the function of this that tau itself. In this function we are integrating the multiplication of L f with the sin square and which is a function of pi f and tau. So, f is frequency over which we are integrating and the integration limit the highest uh, limit is uh, f offset which is the maximum offset frequency of interest which we are covering to know the effect of jitter. Now, this L f is the PSG of the phase noise at frequency f with respect to the carrier. So, uh, if we have our so if we have in frequency domain phase noise is something like that right. So, at 0 frequency or DC frequency at RF frequency again we have our carrier signal and then very small phase noise will be there around the because of the carrier. So, it is not in the uh, main information, but in the carrier signal. So, this is SC which I can call carrier signal. So, the main voltage here with respect to the PSD here at this F this is what is represented by L f here. So, P s g of the phase noise at frequency f here and P s d of the carrier signal. So, this axis here will be dBm per hertz which is representing P s d. So, by this uh, formulation if we know uh, our frequency representation we can easily calculate the RMS jitter in seconds. Now, apart from the jitter and the inherent phase noise and we have seen the relation between these two also, there is something called spurts in the clock. In a practical scenario sometimes when you have your signal and this is your LO signal at FRF for the homodyne signal, you can see this kind of structure which you can identify as phase noise. But sometimes you see these small spurs, small uh, fluctuations in the frequency domain and these are called uh, spurs and, uh, which is appearing because of the leakage from other oscillators and it can also be modulation with the oscillator itself. And by itself it is uh, reflection is intermingling with this one and you can see some small component here. Now, this spurs because they are in frequency domain they will have a impact in the time domain too. So, this is the formula which is relating the RMS jitter in seconds to this spurs. So, if you uh, compare it with our previous uh, metric which was the phase noise, if you look at this it has very similar formula. Only difference here is that instead of using L f we are using L f m. So, this L f m is actually amplitude of the spur with respect to carrier. So, 
previously we are talking in uh, about the phase noise now we are seeing let's say it is the noise level and this is the spur here so the level between these two the difference between these two is given as lfm so of course it is very similar to the phase noise uh, case we are uh, dealing in the frequency domain and we are measuring uh, our distortion which was phase noise before now it is this spur formulation is very similar and uh, it is expected because uh, both are happening in the frequency domain and both are relating that frequency domain parameter to the time domain so after this once we have seen the uh, impact of uh, different kind of uh, noises on the adc normally when we calculate that uh, voltage noise level it is mostly for the full scale usage of the adc so whenever we are calculating the dynamic range of adc uh, we are doing this formula 6.02 into n plus 1.76 uh, which gives us the dynamic range in uh, dbc basically it is applied when we are using your adc to the full voltage but we should be able to calculate the noise level also for any signal level so adc noise level for any signal level is given by this formulation this formula requires the knowledge of input impedance which is given by, given by z in it also require a full scale voltage knowledge so that this fs dbm is uh, can be calculated and this parameter can be used in the formulation apart from that it requires the measured signal to noise ratio so suppose our uh, signal is coming and it is not up to full scale but because of the attenuation it is somewhere in uh, in between the amplitude ranges this is the measured signal to noise ratio whatever we are seeing in the signal and uh, while this is the signal to noise ratio this s dbf is actually the actual amplitude level of that selected signal so by using this formulation we can easily cal calculate the adc noise level for any particular signal level not only the full scale so after covering all this thing uh, which are impacting our adc noise performance uh, let us have a look at the noise of adc in overall system level noise so if you remember previously we have calculated the system level uh, noise power uh, which also include the detector it has uh, four components p and db which was the available noise uh, noise power which was available at the input at the antenna so in in the normal case if there is no noise available there still they have the thermal noise and if you remember we calculated it to be minus uh, 174 uh, it was calculated from k t not b now nfrx is actually noise figure of the chain and we had calculated this noise figure uh, in the previous uh, lectures uh, for a chain by using the fritz formula now gdb is representing the overall gain of the system which is given in the decibels and this bd is actually detector bandwidth and we take the logarithmic of this because all of this are given in the db form now if we do the calculation for this one uh, for let's take few values let's say noise figure is equal to the if nf is equal to the 10 db gain is given as 40 db and uh, we also require detector bandwidth let's say pn db is minus 124 dbm then we want to calculate the this pn total and we have calculated in the previous example by using this factors it was coming out to be minus 74 dB. So, this total power we have calculated earlier. Now, we want to see that what will be the effect of including ADC noise in the overall system level noise. 
So first of all, we should uh, appreciate that uh, we had done all the calculation in the power domain till now. So uh, basically, what we had done that we have taken whatever voltage was available there, and we had done V square upon two R calculated into power, and then we had done the uh, con converted into dB is k. Now our ADC is a voltage uh, driven component. It means that if you want to include our ADC noise, uh, it will be easy to appreciate if everything in the voltage form. So these are the steps for including the ADC noise and to get the actually voltage of the total noise of the whole system including our RFIF components, including our uh, ADC quantization noise etc. everything. So first of all, first step will be calculate uh, sorry convert the noise power to voltage by using input imp impedance of the converter. So first of all we have to remember that input impedance of ADC is quite high up to 1 kilohertz. Now uh, in the previous lectures I have mentioned that in the RF domain most of the cables they are meshed, meshed to the 50 ohm load. But because our impedance of uh, ADC is uh, up to 1 kilo ohm and we, it has to be matched to 50 ohm. So first of all we have to do the calculation for that one. So uh, how do we do that? We have to convert it into voltage. So we can do two things. This impedance has to be eventually matched to the 50 ohm. So in the first step uh, you are will be brought down to 200 ohm by using a shunt but still it is 200 ohm it has to be matched to the uh, uh, our 50 ohm system. So then we use 4 ratio 1 transformer. So by using this transformation 200 ohm impedance is brought down to 50 ohm and it is matched to the cable uh, impedance required. Now because we are doing this transformation then our voltage because uh, this is the power even with the transformer action we have to conserve this power right. So if the impedance ratio is 4 ratio 1 then voltage ratio will be what? It will be 1 ratio 2 for voltage because we want to conserve our we want we, we will have the same power. So we are conserving the power it is the same and the voltage ratio will be 1 ratio 2. Now first step was to convert our power into the voltage. So So we will convert it back into this but we have to remember that we have this ratio of 2 also. So our V in actually becomes twice of whatever we will calculate from this formula. So V in effective becomes twice of under root of P noise total into Z in. Basically, we will be calculating our voltage. So, for our uh, previous example, when we had minus uh, 74 uh, dV, uh, our uh, output power, uh, then this we want to use here, but it will be in the form of watt. So, let us convert uh, this minus 74 dB into watts. So, uh, we will start our calculation from power to voltage level. Our original uh, power level so our original power level was minus 74 dBm so we will convert it back into voltage and then uh, this way we can calculate our Vn 
two times. Two hundred ohm because two hundred ohm is our input resistance. So, with this calculation we will get our voltage and it will be in the very small range. So, after calculation this is the voltage we are getting. So, first of first calculation of this voltage. So, once we have this voltage uh, at the input of the ADC because of the system uh, which was uh, attached to ADC before the ADC means due to RF and IF components and the receiver chain. Now, apart from that let us uh, calculate the input referred noise due to ADC which also include the quantization noise. So, we can see the formulation in this slide that uh, it is dependent on two things first is full scale RMS voltage for ADC and the second one is actually SNR. Uh, which is the full scale SNR which we calculate by using our dynamic range formula. And by this we are able to get our voltage uh, ADC noise. Now, we can do a calculation for the 14 bit converter and SNR of 72 dB and 2 volt peak to peak full voltage we have to calculate the noise in the volts. So, it is a 14 bit uh, converter and uh, we will be having SNR of 22, uh, 72 dB because there is some noise. So, that SNR of 72 we can put in this formula here. Now, V F S RMS has to be calculated for 2 volt peak to peak full voltage. It is 2 volt peak to peak. So, uh, from 0 to peak it will be only 1 volt. Then we have to calculate the RMS of this. So, we will uh, calculate the RMS of this and we will apply the formula there. So, this 14 bit information is not being used because SNR is already being given here and it is impacted by other noises. So, we will just ignore this information and based on the, these two information we will do our calculation. So, V and ADC. One upon root two, which is the RMS value, there, and then minus seventy two upon twenty, and uh, it is on the ten to the power. So by this calculation, we will get our value. It should uh, again should be very small because it is a noise value. So by calculation, it is coming out to be. in micro volts range again so 177.64 micro volts. So, now we know the uh, voltage equivalent of the noise because of the all the RF chain, we know the voltage equivalent because of the ADC and the total noise contribution will be the addition of these two RMS value. So, the, the voltage value of uh, the IF chain and then voltage value uh, of noise due to ADC they are added together in the square sense and then we have taken the square root. So, when we calculate our uh, noise like this then we have uh, total noise because of ADC, RF, IF and log and all the quantization steps. Now, in this calculation we have used only the impact of uh, SNR given to us and other noises can also be investigated uh, by including those effect in the SNR of ADC and then final calculation can be done for new SNR for that one. So, for this for our given uh, example uh, what will be the overall noise contribution. So, previously V n I f we have calculated and V n ADC we have already calculated V n ADC is 177.64 uh, micro volt and uh, our previous value for uh, uh, IFs uh, was 252 uh, micro volt. So, 
and total V n of R x chain will be the squaring of this and the summation of this and this value is coming out to be again in the micro uh, micro voltages for my calculation it is coming out to be 38.1 micro volt. So, in this way you can do the calculation for uh, this one. Now, uh, we have seen that what will be the effect of noise in voltage for the ADC because ADC is a voltage driven component. But it is still uh, interesting to know the effective noise figure of the ADC. Uh, so, at least theoretically, so that if we know the noise figure of the chain and we want to incorporate this element ADC at the end of the receiver, then we can do so. So, this formula is uh, giving the relation between different uh, parameters with the noise figure of the ADC. So, as we can see, it is dependent on uh, the RMS voltage value of the ADC, which is applied at the input voltage uh, input uh, uh, port then z in is the converter input impedance in our case it was uh, 1 kilo ohm in our previous example snr adc which is single to noise ratio at full scale so it is again the theoretical snr the fs is the sampling frequency here and b is basically the bandwidth for which we are calculating this. So, this bandwidth is taken in the hertz and this is again the noise component which is coming from the temperature k is the Boltzmann constant b is the bandwidth again. So, as an example before the next lecture uh, let us calculate the noise figure of this ADC if you are given that f s which is the sampling rate it is equal to 100 megahertz. The bandwidth is given as 1 hertz input uh, impedance is 200 ohm and the voltage which is applied to is is given as 1 volt peak voltage. Uh, please note it is not peak to peak voltage it is only peak voltage and you are given that SNR of this ADC is 76 dBc. So, keeping this in mind uh, let us calculate the effective noise figure of the ADC. So, in the next lecture we will start from this example and we will see what the noise figure uh, we are getting and then we will continue with the distortion parameters. Thank you.